Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending August 25th. I'm dedicating this TDD report to the memory of Neil Armstrong, astronaut, first man to step foot on the face of the moon, passed away Saturday at the age of 82, born in 1930. First up, some information on the NASA Mars rover. It's actually starting to move around. There's a film that they've got. I've, I've got the link down below. All the links to everything I'm talking about pretty much will be down below. Look in the description. They've got a two-minute movie posted where they've taken it out on test runs to where they've moved it, I think, approximately they said three meters forward, three meters back. They've also tested the actuators for steering and the arms to make sure the arms would retract and all of the different articulating joints work properly. And so far it seems like everything works just according to plan. Uh, kind of nice to see it actually getting ready to do some work. I think they've already used the laser once, and then they're going to start moving to its next destination at the edge of the closest mountain range to start doing some testing and blasting of the rocks with the laser probe and seeing what they can find. So if you get a chance, check that out. Next up, this was sent to me by my friend, Cuca Ryder, Phil. This is about a hover bike that lets you drive like a Jedi. I actually found the link he sent me. Um, I also got another link that was a little bit better as far as showing film to it. This is from the MSNBC link, which will be down below. This one seems quite a bit more stable. Now, they've, they've been doing these kind of hovercrafts with ducted fans and jet engines for a long, long time. But the problem ever since the 50s and 60s were that these things were so inherently unstable, you needed, like, the best of the best pilots to fly these things and even a lot of those guys ended up getting killed but when you build a craft that's so unstable that only one or two people in the world are capable of flying it that can be a problem nowadays with computer design to make the crafts more stable and then computer controls to not let the craft ever get into position where it can lose stability and various safety devices this thing looks to be something that could actually work and be useful although Useful as recreation, I would say more like this is over a dry lake bed that they're showing this. There's a film, if you'll scroll down in this article, there's a, a short film about this too, showing it moving about. Still, the inherent problem with these, even if they get them totally safe, totally stable, and even if they can get them down to an affordable price, which I think this one's going to cost well over $100,000 even when they produce it, you've still got a lot of downdraft and air blowing things all over the place. So to make this practical for using in an urban or even a suburban environment, as much air as it has to duct down to be able to lift all that weight up, and the noise too. I mean, you can make them a lot quieter than they used to be, but I still think it's going to be huge. You know, if you're a block or two away, you're going to hear this thing coming, I think, even as quiet as they could possibly make it. So I would say more like a rich man's recreational toy, unless they could pr uh, improve on those two things. They, there's just no way physics can work to where you can lift that much weight without pushing an enormous amount of air down. I just see no other way of doing it, but it's still, it's it's cool to watch. It's a very good um, short video to watch. And next up, this is something that kind of caused me to think about it when I, when I saw this article compared to something that happened two weeks ago. I was in a Burger King and I ordered a burger. I, I only rarely, rarely go to fast food restaurants, but I was in a Burger King. I ordered a burger. I opened the box and this burger looked exactly like the pictures you see. I mean, you never ever, at least in my life up until this point, I've never ever seen a burger look like what is in the picture. I almost actually took my camera out and took a picture of this. It was so perfect. I mean, the meat was perfectly shaped. The bun was, I mean, it looked just like an advertisement. And uh, I wonder how many people have ever had that happen in their life. I never expected to have it happen. It's probably the only time it's going to happen to me. But to have something look exactly like they show in the commercials, because you know they take hundreds and hundreds of, you know, buns, uh, probably, you know, dozens and dozens of meat patties to where they find one that looks just perfect, put all these together and assemble it. You're probably talking hundreds and hundreds of hours of work to get these just right. Well, on Gizmodo, they have uh, an article that they printed, they uh, posted yesterday called IKEA uses fake digitally created rooms inside its catalog and they're talking about the fact that instead of hiring people to do set design and set up the fake walls and arrange the furniture and make you know a demonstration room to show off say a chair or an end table or something like that they're doing 12 percent of them now yeah 12 percent on computer and they're going to up it to around 25 percent done on computer 
you can kind of see that with nowadays the costs of labor and things like that, that it pretty much has to go that way. Do you really think that somehow that is so wrong after enduring all the commercials we have? I mean, ever since childhood, they've made toys look like they could do things they couldn't possibly do or make them look three times bigger, and then you get them, and you get them home, and you realize, hey, this thing is just a tiny little toy, but on the commercial it looked so much bigger. Do you really think, based on this article, that Ikea is really doing something bad? I personally think as long as the item looks about like what it's supposed to look like and they don't fudge it on as far as the size or the shape or things like that, if it's just put in a setting. I mean, you go to the Ikea store and they make those rooms. They're not like real rooms like people have anyway. I mean, they're so clean and neat and tidy and they've got little designer decor and, you know, things like that that... I don't consider those real rooms either. They're display rooms. They're mock-ups made by people. So uh, even somebody made the, the points down in the comments here, like I did too. This guy uh, made a uh, point here on the comments. Sneaky Poo is the name. So they're doing what most other companies are doing as well. Do you think those burgers and the commercials are real? I think people are, are ready to accept this. I, I don't really think like this guy is trying to promote in this article that people are going to get all upset about it. I think... The main thing that I'm looking for is just the accuracy of when I look at the object, is it going to look pretty much when I get it home like it looks in the picture in the catalog, or at least, you know, so it doesn't disappoint me so much that I make a trip to the store, and then I look at it and I'm like, this isn't what I was seeing there. If it's if it's pretty close, I'll be satisfied. So anyway, give me your opinion down in the comments if you want to about that particular thing. And with August coming to an end, we're looking at September, we're looking at people getting ready to think about buying gifts for Christmas or various holidays coming up. And for the geeky kind of people, I actually found something that you guys might really like. It's from crazyasabagofhammers.com and 11 cheap gifts guaranteed to impress science geeks. Science geeks will love these, and I agree too. These gifts range in price from a little bit over $100, quite a few under $100, quite a few under $50, and even a few under $25. So there's a whole range of these 11 gifts to get for people. Uh, two of the real interesting ones that I think are the fact you can get a hunk of metal for how much is the cost? Do they say the cost of this? Um, I don't think they do here. I think I went and looked, but you can get this one, I think, for under $100. You can get a chunk of this metal called uh, gallium, and you can hold it in your hand and it melts at 85 degrees. So you've got a chunk of metal, silvery metal, and it starts melting in your hand. And then you just let go of it and let it set and it will come back again and be solid. So that's kind of cool. You can also buy aerogel. They say the price of the sample they're showing here is $35 for the aerogel. Um, all the way down to um, you can get these little plush, plush toy microbes for, uh, I think they're just like a few dollars. What are, what's theirs? Yeah, $9. $9 or less you can get that. Also, what I'm really interested too is a Klein bottle. If you don't know what a Klein bottle is, I'll, I'll put some of the pictures up of these things as I'm going, obviously, and talking about them. But this Klein bottle is a two-dimensional object in three-dimensional space. It's a, a bottle where the, the neck turns back in on itself. So, yeah, if you want to see what a two-dimensional object looks like in three-dimensional space, or in their case, like they say, uh, it's a three-dimensional representation of a four-dimensional object if you want to try to wrap your mind around that. But anyway, 11 really good gift choices, and I think for any kind of budget, if you've got somebody that's a science geek or into gadgets or anything kind of just silly and different, check it out. It's really, really good. And I want to, at the end, I want to shamelessly promote two videos. Uh, one of them is from a newer vlogger. He's been around a, a while, but not real, real long time. GL Boca. He was at the meetup with us, and he did an interview with Navy Thomas 8. turned out very good. I watched it, and I was really blown away with how good the quality was of this. So if you want to check out, it's called Q&A with Navy Thomas 8. Link down below in the description. And the second one I want to make a shameless promo for was from Honda Scooter Lady. As some of you know, right now she's um, awaiting surgery, so she's not able to do riding, but she's still participating in the community really well. She did a video called Basing Stoke UK versus the Midwest USA Biker Meetups, comparing the both and giving points and scores for various subjects that she picked out of uh, what she likes about the meetups and, and gave points to the UK guys for some things, gave points to the Midwest guys for other things. Very great video, so if you get a chance, check that out, too, from Honda Scooter Lady. And if you haven't subscribed to either one of these people, subscribe to them, too. They support the community. So anyway, that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.